over the past decade, I've worked with quite a few different data teams and have been fortunate or maybe unfortunate enough to have seen a lot of things go well and not go so well. Generally speaking, most teams have good intentions, but I have noticed over the years that there are three really common, what I call strategy killers that tend to derail projects or really just end up with a lot of wasted time and effort trying to modernize their data architecture. So number one is a really common one, not just for data, but just companies in general. And that's too much tribal knowledge and tribal knowledge. If you're not familiar with the term is basically people who have worked at a company for a really long time. They understand in their own minds and amongst each other what the rules are or what something represents, but there's no actual documentation or written explanation of what that is. All of that knowledge is amongst the tribe, amongst the people who have been there the longest, it's unwritten rules. And of course you can never fully avoid that. It's just part of any culture and any group of people. But at the same time, when it comes to a successful data architecture, when you have too much tribal knowledge and you want to maybe onboard a new person to the team or explain something to somebody outside of the team, it can really throw things off and make your team or even you as an individual look really unorganized or unprepared. So the best way to get around this, unfortunately, is to document. It's not a fun process, but it's something that, again, the more you can mitigate this, the better you're going to be in the long run. I know this is very obvious and common sense, but it still happens. So maybe you're going through something with your team right now. Take a moment to think about how much information is stuck between maybe one or two individuals that other people don't quite understand, or you always have to go to somebody to get an answer because they've been around enough or they understand the situation better than others. If you see that, those are common signs that you have too much tribal knowledge going on and it's better to share the wealth of information, get it written down, get it organized so that everybody on the team can follow along and you can be way more effective in the long run. And just to put this all in perspective, again, just imagine you have an individual person who's the original architect of the entire data architecture, let's just say, and that person decides to leave the company for whatever reason. If this is something that's mainly stuck with that one person and they walk away, you're now in a very difficult position to try to pick up the pieces. And when that happens, now you have new people coming in who don't want to break anything because they don't understand fully what was built before because there's no documentation. They don't really know what happened. And then that becomes patchwork on top of things. And over time, this becomes a growing problem until you really have to start over and do all the work all over again. This is something I've personally run into multiple times in my career, both as an employee and as a consultant. So it's something you absolutely want to keep an eye on. Number two is not spending time refactoring. Again, this is something that I realize in the normal cadence of work is difficult to do. But unfortunately, what happens in the development world and data in particular is that you spend all this time building things, you're moving fast, but you never really spend the time to revisit it. Once it's done, it just stays there. And and keeps running in perpetuity until eventually you start over or you just never touch it. And sometimes that's okay. But a lot of times we're not perfect on the first go round. There are a lot of areas where you could go back and likely really improve something. The more you understand something as a team gets better, nothing's ever perfect the first time, or at least it's very rare. So a way to go about this typically is to allocate either in an individual sprint or maybe once a month or once a quarter, something like that, where you spend time dedicated just to go back and refactor some things, just to revisit stuff, fix things that you know aren't perfect perfect, but you just never have the time to do it because you're so busy with new work. I also recognize that the pushback a lot from the business side of things is that we want outputs and results of reports or whatever it is you're building. They don't want to be slowed down because you need to go refactor something that doesn't really mean anything to the business. But if there is a way to position this to whoever it is to say, hey, look, by spending this time, we're going to be able to make your deliverables be more performant. Maybe it'll run faster. Maybe it'll allow you to take on new data or do new things with it that is going to benefit them as the stakeholder. Or maybe there's a cost implication. Maybe you have really long running queries or something that's really inefficient. But if you just could spend maybe a day or an afternoon on something, you could really improve it, which is going to actually turn into real money saved for the company that's just going to compound over time because you fixed it up front. Again, I also realize this is usually easier said than done. But if you really want your strategy to be implemented and to scale long term, it's really important that you spend time to refactor. Otherwise, it's going to be more of a slower death in the long run of things not being optimized and not working well, because you never took the time to go back and look at it. Now, number three is migrating existing bad code or bad logic. And this is most common when you're doing a data migration, or you're trying to revamp your architecture. A lot of times it goes something along the lines of this, you want to introduce some new tools, some new workflows or whatever that is. And you just basically basically copy and paste what you did before into these new tools, hoping it's going to fix everything and things will go faster. Maybe you're using a new database that has a better query engine and you just throw everything at it. And yes, it'll run a little bit faster, but are you really fixing
fixing the problem or you're moving from one, let's say data transformation tool to another and just copying and pasting stored procedure code because you don't really want to take the time to rethink about your whole strategy or maybe the warehousing and the modeling. Is this the right way that we should be doing this going forward? The focus becomes too much on lifting and shifting the tooling than actually fixing your code or the logic. It's a really good opportunity during those migrations to take a moment and really think about your strategy. Now I have worked with some clients where they are very aware of this. And when we go through these migrations, they're very focused on making sure that the way that they do it now makes the most sense, even if it's different than what they did before. They're willing to switch up some things about their modeling or their workflow if it means that it's going to benefit them in the long run because it makes more sense with the new architecture that they're going towards. But on the other hand, a lot of teams will just copy and paste what they do because they're on such a time crunch. And I've seen those as well. And I just know when I walk away from those projects that it's not going to end well in the long run. But sometimes there's other factors at play that kind of force your hand into moving faster than you would like. And you don't really get the time to reconsider it. You just got to get it done. And if that's something you find yourself going through or your team is trending in that direction, I would really advise you to think about it and reconsider if there's an opportunity here to really set yourself up for a better future rather than just copying and pasting something that maybe doesn't make the most sense. So again, those are three common strategy killers. If there are some other ones you've come across, feel free to leave a comment. I'd be curious to hear what others are going through. If you like this video and you want to connect more with me, I'll have a link below in the description and in the comments. But thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.